Hey everyone, I'm Sam and welcome to Gear There and Everywhere. Today we are discussing Dear Prudence. I'm joined by Dom, Paul, and Ryan. And um, there's a lot to discuss, so where do we begin? Well, want to give a little bit of background on the song? Recording dates? Sure. <laughs> That's a good idea. <laughs> Songwriting history? All right. How, where do we begin? Who's not well, there? Well, it was What's, written in 1968. So it was it written was. in March of 68, while the Beatles were in India. Yes. Yeah. And why were they in India, real quick, so we get a little background, too. So to back study. in late 67, they were sort of yeah. getting interested in the transcendental meditation stuff, and they had planned a trip to go hang out with this Maharishi guy who had sort of become a little too popular in their minds, I guess. <laughs> uh, and who did maybe, they go with? Well, they... Uh, there's a whole bunch of people that went. Um, so they, Mike Love. yeah. Well, I was gonna just mention real quick. Uh, Brian Epstein was supposed to go with them. Uh, I oh, think, he never made or it. he was gonna go with them to something to meet the guy, and then he died, of course, like right before that was supposed to happen. And then oh, you brought that up because that was probably a way for them to try to meditate and get that out of their system. That, yeah, I think so that was. That was he yeah. dies in like what September or August of sixty seven. Or he he died. Yeah, he died when they came back. I think. No, no, he died way before. Or was it that. before? It's way was before. They were in Wales oh, when they right. heard the news right. and there's like interviews with them like reacting. Off the train. Yeah, that was Yeah, because he, he died like before the Magical Mystery Tour got made. Right. Um, and then, so then they went in the studio in February, did Lady Madonna, Inner Light, and Hey Bulldog. Then like right after that, they went on a plane, went to uh, India. They're with Mia and Prudence Farrow and... Mike Love, as you mentioned, and Donovan. Donovan. And then Donovan Lloyd. they all had uh, their wives, and Paul had Jane Asher there, who they were S engaged uh, at the time, I think. Yeah. They had now, maybe just recently gotten engaged. Cynthia hoped this would be a good way for John to get off drugs. Which it really was, honestly. And she says so in her book. It was a good way for John to get off the drugs. And I, I think it did for the most part. So but it didn't work in her favor because he was mailing Yoko every day. Yeah. In the yeah. post office. And she didn't know. Cynthia, but yeah. Donovan taught John the, the Travis picking pattern and he wrote Julia yeah. and Dear Prudence, which Dear so Prudence real quick, is the topic. When we get into it, Sam, let's demonstrate, since you're plugged in right now, anybody who wants to demonstrate what Travis picking is. Yeah, I can. I got this. So... Nice. I, honestly, I'll be honest, before this day, I've never heard it described as that. I've never heard that Travis before. Yeah. It's uh, Merle Travis, okay. the old country picker. Because I would think of, like, Chet Atkins was doing this kind of stuff, too. But uh, did was this set before Merle Travis after? was way before, okay. like, yeah. 40s and 50s, okay. yeah. Well, basically, what's happening is you got one instrument, but you want to play, like, a full song type of thing. So how do you do that? Well, I have these lower strings, and I can do this alternating part with the bass strings. Like... And then you just do a melody up here. So what he does is he plays it like this. played it better but it's difficult to do it holding it up like this <laughs> <laughs> that's but, travis picking yeah and uh john caught on to it really well paul not so much he yeah, kind of morphed it into his own thing and did blackbird <laughs> yeah i can show what paul did for that um so what paul did instead was he for blackbird he just sort of let me move this out of the way a little bit um he did this more like Oh, this is drop D. So let's see. <laughs> so Blackbird is more like he's still doing thumb picking, but he's not doing like he's doing like. And so instead of like doing some specific thing like consistently, with the up 
the hop. The oh, top it's just... Yeah, he's just, he's just... He's just messing with his little finger there. We'll save that for another video. <laughs> yeah. So, that's how they played it differently. And George, did George really ever do that kind of stuff? Not really. No. Have you guys listened to Donovan's album, um, Where You Lo- Love Like Heaven, like that whole era? Yeah, it's really uh, cool. You hear that songs that might as well have been, you know, a Lennon track mm-hmm. yeah. um, in terms of the picking. Well, not going to give him more of a listen. Yeah, he's got some good some good stuff. And Sunshine Superman is, you know, oh, that's a, great a little song. earlier, but that's good production stuff going on there. Um, yeah, so... We're okay. We got the basics down. Well, the wait. Song... We got to okay. remember the namesake of the song too. Yeah. Oh yeah. So the the girl who that was, was there. It, uh, who was it named after? So we said Mia and Prudence Pharaoh were there, and probably just a result of you know being away from the rest of the world for so long. I don't I mean it was like they were there like a month or so. Ringo wasn't there as mm-hmm. long, but like some of them were getting really affected by it, I guess, or maybe also just the heat or. Uh, the food i know i think ringo and maureen maybe got food poisoning or something um but uh yeah prudence i think went and like locked herself in a building and then like was freaking out or something and so she actually was meditating very intensely it was like she got too deep into it and funnily enough she later became a meditation teacher um and it's still i think she's still doing it and also another weird fact i learned recently I was watching the documentary about the serial killer Robert Durst. Apparently, she dated him in the 80s. <laughs> no way. After he had killed his wife or something. Yeah. Damn. It was crazy. Great way to stay. Yeah, so, she's still I around. Guess, How about that? Going off of what Sam would say, was saying, too, I guess she would only come out to eat and everything else. So, basically, the point of the song was to try to get her out because she was just so intense into the meditation even though i guess they took it seriously as well the beatles but she just took it to the next level because she really wanted to get to the next level <laughs> yeah that's the best way to say it <laughs> so the song is written about her now i guess now that we got the song all laid out let's start diving into some of the specifics before we get into any of the guitar stuff let's start talking about all the backing let's start her off with uh the, the most simple, the bass. What do we think is on that? I would have to say it's his 4001. Yeah. Or Probably with the mutes up oh, on the 4001. Definitely either that or the jazz bass. I think there's I, nothing I'm actually else leaning. Could be. I'm leaning more towards the jazz bass, actually. Um, one of my buddies, Geo. Uh, Let us know in the comments what you all think. If you think it was the jazz bass, the Rickenbacker bass, and in future episode, we'll be. We spawn back to all those comments. Yeah, we didn't spend nearly as much time thinking about that because the no there were yeah. some other things at hand which you may have I, th- I think it was hands. the jazz bass though <laughs> again my, my one of my buddies did it he my buddy geo did it and it, it was exact on his jazz bass um i'll link that as well at some point cool um yeah so that was well let me talk about the days because The first day of recording is August 28th, and it all we know is they did, uh, well, again, like While My Guitar Gently Weeps, the session was very long. The session, and also it was at Trident, which apparently cost EMI a lot of money because they were basically recording overnight at Trident, and so every, every, every uh, engineer and stuff was all having to get overtime hours, overtime pay. Um, because they were there 5 p.m. to 7 a.m. And this is all for what is referred to as take one. <laughs> oh. So, and uh, this is, they were at Trident because, and so this is right before Wild My Guitar Gently Weeps, if you watch that episode. Um, and so this is in Trident where they had an 8-track machine, and that's basically basically why they were there, right? Does that sound right to you guys? I don't yeah, know because it was the only studio around that had that multiple yeah. machine around. And yeah, my I guess didn't. they, yeah, they only had a four track at the time, and I guess th- going there was a big push for EMI. I guess to get the eight track. Same with um, Olympic Studios also had an eight track, and they did um, maybe you're a rich man there, and the Stones, the Who did stuff there, so they were kind of like, why is EMI Abbey Road not up to speed, tech wise? 
Was uh was Hey Jude recorded on the eight tracks too? Do we know? Wasn't was that it recently? Trident as well? Was it the the famous piano used there was also uh, used on Bohem- Bohemian Rhapsody, David Bowie's famous album Hunky Dory, and yeah. Elton John. I mean, it's crazy the piano that was used. I, I don't I know what Beckstein. it was though. Yeah, what was it? Uh, Beckstein, I think. Beckstein. Hmm. But we're not here to talk about Hey Jude. No, no we're not. <laughs> Sorry. Although that that is the same piano that is on Dear Prudence, right? Probably was, yeah. Yeah. Um, and there's something interesting getting back to August um, that happened in the Beatles. A uh, certain member of the group decided to leave. So at this point, Ringo was gone, and he had left like a few weeks earlier, um, sometime middle slash the end of August, because uh, I believe he was only gone for about two weeks. And the songs that we know he was gone for are Back in the USSR and Dear Prudence. Back in the mm-hmm. USSR is August 22nd and 23rd, and then Dear Prudence is the 28th and 29th, uh, and some on the 30th, I believe, too. Okay. Uh, and then he comes back. The first day he came back was on September 5th, which was the day they recorded While My Guitar Gently Weeps. Um, and that was the day they put a whole bunch of flowers on his, his drum set and all this, and sort of he felt included again and all of this um that, so now what drum set would you have been using during that i think it's that hollywood kit right this that same one that we featured in the last yeah, episode probably he gently got weeps, right? the, the first song he used um the hollywood kit on was i'm so tired which was oops sorry i'm trying to find what date that was i'll race you October. Okay, so actually, he probably was using the Ludwig still at this point. Oh, okay. Well, then we maybe got mm. that wrong last time. Hmm. I thought we had that picture of the with the double. Oh, maybe not. I don't remember. That was October, though. Yeah. So he was using the the Ludwig still four piece oh. at this time. Okay. The 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 black uh, oyster. Yes. Yeah. And how long? had he been using that one for at this point i think that was the one he'd been using since 64 or 65 okay yeah yeah i know we're so, gonna probably bring on a drum person later yeah so i think the but, size um, of the toms changed around what is it 65 or 66 interestingly the snare never changed he always had the same snare but and he did have a different kit like sometime in 65 um, for some tours but for like Pepper and all those albums I'm pretty sure it was the 64 Ludwig kit Okay, and it was a 22 inch bass drum except for the early days it was a 20 and I think he switched from the 20 to 22 and 64 I'm pretty sure okay Um, 64 you know again this is me just with these random years you know it could be any time but there you go So we gotta polish up our drum knowledge here so Ringo yeah. was not oh, there man. for the sessions yep. we know about. Yeah. Uh, we'll get into the controversy around that in a little bit. But for the time being, the basic track was Paul. And we know that it was Paul uh, on drums. Uh, but again, they had a lot of room for overdubs on this 8-track. So those fills and everything that's at the end of the song, those aren't on the basic track he's playing something simpler all the way through and then those would have been overdubbed like a day or so later with mm. cowbell too right uh i guess i didn't know that yeah yeah there's some cowbell in there um and so the the controversy i'm referring to is there's people that believe that paul couldn't have played that or wouldn't have played that anyway and that they would have when ringo came back said like oh hey uh you know we want you to like take part in the song we just did why don't you go like redo this bit if you want to but like you got to think about how complicated of a thing that would have been like because they weren't going back to uh like they weren't going to go back i think they were done with trident at this point right so like well no because they did honey pie and trident in october and some oh is that october things. i was thinking that was earlier. yeah oh i, I was looking at i was looking at so. wild honey pie that was earlier. Oh. um that's my favorite uh beatles song it's the worst song ever <laughs> <laughs> nice <laughs> Um, okay, so, but that would have been fairly complicated to have him overdub on this thing that was already done, especially since 
at this point they're what like halfway done the album or something like that and yeah. they're you know they've still got to do another like 14 or 16 tracks or something and they want to have this thing out for the Christmas market and they've only got another like two months or so to do that uh, so I don't think they would have been messing around too much with that especially since they were already spending so much money in the studio I don't know it just seems very unlikely that they would have had Ringo on and if they had I'm sure like Mark Lewis and probably would have documented that pretty well but the only well, days I think the, the dates that it said were the 28th to the 30th I think Ringo right. was still away yeah he was still away he didn't everything. come back till September 5th so if yeah, if he did come back and then record drums for this as an overdub later it's not documented at all and I don't I don't think any of us see any reason why that would have been the case it, it sounds to us like Paul is doing the drumming I think I don't know do you guys yeah, have it sounds like his te- no it sounds like his technique as soon as you guys show me that video and plus if I guess I never thought about the drumming hard enough but the minute I heard all oh, that could be Paul when you listen to it instantly you're like oh yeah that's sounds yeah, like something Paul it's would do. definitely Paul on that although it's interesting you maybe Ringo did overdub it's a possibility he could especially at the, the end fills. maybe just added some quick little yeah little Tom things here and there just like yeah, I'll add on something you know but Paul's yeah. definitely on the track though on drums. well he's definitely on the track it's the question yeah. that uh, for debate is more the the fills at the end which I still oh, think yeah. are Paul could be um, I haven't listened to it in a while shame on me <laughs> um okay so that's drums on the basic track so the other stuff presumably on the basic track would be John and George on guitars mm-hmm. um, and so let's go with George first since that's a shorter conversation <laughs> you guys want to take over on that well he's we know he's playing his SG most likely his SG um, why is that well again the way that I'm thinking of it is with the Les Paul being a little more bass heavy Again, this could all be EQs, but a lot of sources say that it was the SG. He did have Lucy at this point, it's worth noting, Um, but I also hear SG. It's just a little more Mm mid-range honk to it. And when did he get Lucy? Sometime in the beginning of August. um, He used it on Not Guilty for the first time in like like August 6th or something, so earlier this month. I'm not guilty. Mm-hmm. Actually, I do want to point out something because before we started this episode, we were talking about how I kind of feel like. Um, sorry, my cat just jumped in. How I kind of felt like that the guitars both sound the same. You know, I kind of felt like you wouldn't really be able to tell the difference between the Les Paul and the SG because the same type of pickups. They're both the uh, PAF pickups, you know. I would imagine they're probably wound about the same, blah blah blah. And again, they're both solid body guitars. But it did occur to me though, the SG had nylon saddles, which it wouldn't have had a lot of re- resonance to it with the nylon saddles. Mm-hmm. Whereas the Les Paul did have metal saddles, or it would have been, I think, nickel or some kind of a metal. So again, that would have had a lot more of a sustain. And or some kind of a better probably bass sound, blah, blah, blah. So, yeah, I guess in this case, you actually could dissect it. I'm sure, as we were talking with the AI stuff, maybe there's a way to get a certain frequency that the Les Paul would generate by having that metal, you know, that, you know, you might be able to pick up. I'm sure technology will get there soon enough, but it's anyways, actually, that's my I'm, own put. I'm sorry, could I nerd out a little bit about... <laughs> pickups because what we're here for i realized um george's sg is um a 64 Six. so actually it wasn't paf they did have the patent already and the the, the pickup sound changed a little bit in 62 once they had the patent um a little bit thicker so um lucy was a 57 very early humbuckers which were a little bit low wind compared to the the mid 60s ones so where well, they were brighter that's my so there would have been some yeah tone differences here and there but yeah. again how much we would be able to tell on these recordings but again hopefully ai eventually might be able to tell us something that we can grab a sample and dissect and it might. blah blah it yeah might. except it gets a little more complicated because we maybe don't know what amp it's in yeah, it wasn't how they eq'd the you know on the board or something like that they were using the fender amps though 
Well, unless you could take one song that's known to have an SG and then translate well, that over, you know, grab that sound so that you can It'd have to be one sure song known to have an SG with the same amp, which might not exist. I wonder if the amp, though, you know, you might be uh, able to, you know, take that out of the equation. There might be some kind of a likeness there. Yeah. You know, that you might records. be able to. With enough data, yeah, you could figure yeah. something out, but. I don't, I don't know if I'm going off topic. What about some of the Bad Finger records? Oh, huh? yeah. Maybe. Bad it's Finger, yeah. They literally the same SG. And high watts, but same SG as George's. Yeah. Actually, um, Sexy Sadie was probably SG and also the Deluxe Reverb, which probably was on this record as well. So that could hmm. be worth looking at. Yeah. You know, the, the lead at the end of Sexy Sadie. Yeah. Similar tone. Yeah. Okay. <clears throat> I don't have much input on that because I don't. I have not really played an SG. So it it could be either guitar, but at the same time, I kind of feel a little bit more towards the Les Paul just because it was a new guitar, and he just yeah. got it. He might want to have featured it. That's the only thing though I have that would convince me towards the Les Paul versus the SG. But it could be either. Um. Okay. So that's George, uh, and then now John. So there's really only two options here. John's doing this uh, finger picking pattern, and uh, the two options. So we know, I, I don't actually know where this information comes from, but we know that he's DI'd direct input into the board. So he's not going through an amp. His cable's going straight from his guitar into the board. Um, we need that. We need that. Dom, I know you said there was a clip that you heard or something where there was a. Who was saying that? We were saying, talking about that one episode. Or it was amongst ourselves, because I know Ryan just mentioned it. Who was saying that? Well, I, uh, I was. I don't know. One of you guys. I've heard that. Somebody said I thought it was this. Dom. But what? yeah, where does that information come from? Like that it was di'd. Something about you heard it on the recording where he says, "Oh, oh it's yeah, yeah, that's right. you were talking what, about, what you're is talking that? about lovely Rita." Oh, that was me talking about in in the Pepper outtakes. John's talking about his lead getting cut, um, and it's it's you know. DI and he talks about direct injection so I mean we know he used it we know Paul used it for bass on some mm -hmm. songs in Pepper but um, yeah I mean Revolution around this time as well what we know was direct so they were doing that um, at this time um, why don't and... we do it in the road also oh I didn't know that there's actually pictures of Paul in the control room recording it so they weren't even oh right us. yeah I have seen those pictures um okay so two guitars in question then would be a casino epiphone casino like this or the other option is his gibson j160e which like uh like sam said he had done direct uh on lovely rita in 67 but at this point as we've shown in photos before this pickup was down here by this point uh, and had been there for a while, actually. And so what that's going to do is that's going to mean the tone won't change too much, probably, but it will be a lot more trebly and less bassy. Um, it's, it does change the tone quite a bit. Okay. I've done it a few times on mine. How would you, how would you describe that? Quacky. Oh, okay. Well, that's Very, tricky because um, this song definitely is quacky. So now, before we get into the, the guitars, let's first talk about the fact that when he went to uh, see the Maharishi, he was there with Donovan, and he was using his J45. So when he learned the Travis-style finger-picking, it was on the acoustic guitar. I kind of feel like that, you know, it goes back to what I was saying. Of course, there's an acoustic guitar on the track, definitely 100%, but just to solidify even more the fact that I feel like since that was the first song that they played out of the gate and it was a tribute to her it was all about uh, prudence it was all acoustic he learned the Travis style on acoustic I feel like that that would have been the primary focus and we hear it too on the demos everything was done with the acoustic mm -hmm. now I know I'm all hyped up about this because I got very passionate because I really listened to this song really 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 hard and 
I guess I just want to say my philosophy, and then if we want, we can listen to yeah, some of it, or can we not? Let's go around the room and say what people think it is, and why, I guess. So, what I feel like it is, is right off the rip, as soon as the song enters, is the casino. Mm-hmm. Direct injection, I'm fine with that theory, I have no problem with it, but it's the casino, definitely, 100%, and as Sam said, most likely, he probably had the switch in the middle position. I understand all that, got no problem with it, I like it. Now, as soon as the four to five second mark hits into the song, as he's going down, just as he's about to hit the D where it starts to go, just before that where I think he used what at a, what were you saying it was C? Uh, what was yeah, before? it's a, what was a C and then to a D, yeah. Right at the C, you can hear the acoustic guitar start coming in. So it was double tracked, and I'm 100% sure myself that it would have been John redoing the double track on the J160. Because yeah. then when we listen to the isolated tracks on it, you can definitely hear it sounds like the J160 and not any other acoustic guitar they might have had lying around or gut, blah, blah, blah. So right off the rip, Epiphone Casino, direct injection. Song then comes in. Acoustic comes in pretty heavily, and that is pretty much equal, I think, in line with what the casino is doing for the most part. And that carries the whole rest of the song. Um Yeah. Well, let me mention, this is a particularly tricky thing to figure out because both guitars are using P90s, so the pickups are pretty similar. Um, and once you're going direct, uh, you... Well, the thing I've noticed from testing this is there's a ton of treble added through the board um, to whatever the guitars on this are. And so that's why you hear more of, like on this song you hear a lot more of this uh what the you hear that a lot more than the because if i play it like this you'll hear them about equally but on the actual song there's a ton more of there's a ton more of that going on. Um, and so I think what's going on with that is they've, they've just got a ton of treble and like lowered the bass on the board, which is probably a good idea because it, you know, frees up some space for Paul's bass to fill in uh, when he overdubs that. Um, and so, Paul, when you're talking about this, are you thinking double tracked casino and then double tracked J160? Yeah. Okay. I or don't... it could have been equal. It could have been first, and then maybe they just did their magic at the board where they faded. You know what I mean? Yeah. They just got rid of the acoustic, then faded it in. They could have done that as well. But no I... matter what, those two go throughout the song. Until that one part, though, where you get the split, and then remember there was that strumming of yeah, the acoustic that we definitely heard. Yeah. Could that, that have been both the casino and the J160? You hear, yeah, you hear that straight acoustic. You so... hear that puppy roaring as an acoustic. It's yeah. very difficult to hear on the actual song, but on the isolated, it's very, yeah. Yeah. on the isolated one, which I, I think we could listen to, um, that it's definitely there's an acoustic in there, which I was surprised to find out because it's very difficult to hear on the actual song. Um, mm. And so oh, going back to before we go any further, I just want to mention why I mentioned the four to five second mark too is when you hear it, it's the open strings is what I was saying before, like the D, the E, and the A. Well, the D as well because that's tuned down technically. But when he's hitting that, that's what distinguishes it for me as being an acoustic. Because that one of those strings, I think it's probably the D he's hitting, or oh, just below the A, it um it rings out a certain way that's different than what the casino would do and what an any electric would do. It would have to be an acoustic because it sounds like an acoustic when it rings. Yeah. Um. Yeah. So I would I would agree with the casino being double tracked. Um. And I don't know about the J160 just because. You can definitely hear one notably with the strumming going on in that isolated track, but the strumming, I don't know. I don't know if the strumming necessarily feels like it's two guitars because like he wouldn't have replicated the way he was strumming it exactly. Um, the finger pickings too. You definitely, we definitely know there's two guitars that come in that are doing it on the D chord. But the strumming thing, I think the guitar, the casino drops off, and I think then the acoustic takes over, and that's the strumming you hear. No, I think it's both, because I, I took the, um, the isolated parts and I matched up the time, and you can hear the, 
the bit. Oh, he's probably sh strumming. You can the hear the strumming shit, yeah. on the casino with the DI in addition to the acoustic, like in the room. Uh, and they don't. The strums don't that. match up exactly. So there's definitely both are there uh, both for that part. Are, yeah. And it, I really do wonder, like, because the acoustic's so buried, like, why is it even there? And I sort of wondered, like, was that the first thing that they recorded? And then everything else went on top of that. Um, I think it's mixing. When, you know how we were talking about before. Like, you know, Dom, when I was mentioned when you did I Call Your Name and you did all those things where you stopped and there's empty spots where the guitar stops, I don't think that's supposed to be there. It's not supposed to be We're replicating it, but it yeah. was. it's only there because when it was mixed down, things got buried and hidden. And I think that's the same case for this. No matter what this new 8-track board or not, when they mix that thing down, that acoustic just got buried and buried. And let's talk about the other tracks around it, too, with those horns on it. I saw that. It said something it trumpet this. Yeah. Mm -hmm. There were so many other layers, so that when they wrapped up those other eight tracks, I'm sure everything else got buried down. Yeah, this is I the mean, same again, thing I talked about before, where once they got access to eight tracks, they went crazy for it. And yeah. Well, because you could record each individual part. Mm-hmm. You know? Like yeah, and once. as context, like for people who don't understand exactly what we're talking about, back in 1963, they were on two track. And so what that meant was they basically recorded everything all at once onto one track. And once you get something on a track, you can change the levels of that track, but you can't change the things within the track uh, compared to each other. So if you've got... Uh, like the whole Please Please Me album, what they would do is they would play, you know, the guitars, bass, drums, and vocals would all be on one track. And then they would save the second track for like some double tracked vocals and then also like claps and like, I don't know, tambourine, other percussion types of things. Um, and very sparingly other guitar parts. And then around, uh, is I, I want to hold your hand, is that right? I think. I want to hold your hand and this boy are maybe they the were first, on four track. That's the first songs where you got, they got a four yeah. track machine and yep. they were on that four track machine until, uh, like this point basically, which is kind of crazy. And I, and you hear them actually talking about this, uh, several months later and they get back documentary where they're complaining about like, Oh, we know the beach boys have got all this stuff. How come we don't? <laughs> um, and then I think, who is it? The director, um, Michael Lindsay Hogg says to them, "Well, it's because they're American." <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, so the mixing, though, definitely, I think, is what contributed to the acoustic guitar getting lower and more buried at certain points. But then, keep in mind, I do think myself personally, as my opinion, throughout the song, though, while that he's singing and that D chord is rambling on through. I feel like he's um, that acoustic's prominent though. It's there. It's in your face. It's there, blaring just as loud as that casino. And I'm and thinking just the acoustic. Pull together. I'm thinking the acoustic is just mic'd in the room. I don't think it's actually yeah. going DI, right? Nope. Yeah. It's yeah. it's yeah. It's mic'd 100. Uh, percent J160, you just mic'd. Because yeah. I tried it DI a few times. I can play those real quick, actually. And at what point is uh, sorry to interrupt uh, Paul saying that the acoustic comes in later in the song? You know, he's or... saying early in the song, and he says it stays there throughout. But like, it's not mm. maybe not there at the opening notes, but it like fades in pretty quickly. I don't know. I yeah. don't. I I haven't made a decision on any of that stuff. I'd say maybe it's there. I think you get this sort of like almost piezo sound anytime you do this direct stuff. Um, oh, of course. And so I think. I can show an example I recorded, but when you do this, when you do that, it doesn't, it sounds like there's a little bit of like, it, it feels almost like there's like a, a frequency gate on the whole thing. Like there's a little bit of like breathing that the instruments could be doing that they're not, which is on the, uh, the finished song. And I think maybe the acoustic might be there at a low volume. And that's sort of helping them to sort of feel like they're filling the space a little more, um, especially because these wouldn't have really had reverb as much, right? Because they're not in the room. They're just recording direct. And so the acoustic gives you a little bit more, I don't know, feels like you're in the space maybe. I don't know. I could, should I show my recordings I did with, with both of them? Yeah. Yeah, definitely. Um, because the, well, the first, let's, let's go to the, let's go to the song for reference first. Let's go to the one that, um, 
Sam has sent us. That's actually a, a good point. Is that like in that raw take from the box set, um, you hear the guitars very clearly. And DI, like when you plug into a tube amp, a tube amp, even a Fender that's very clean, is limiting the frequencies. It's it's pushing the mid range. It's much more sweet because that's what frequencies the guitars are. But in DI, with you know, you're getting everything. You're getting piercing high end. You're getting really low end. So they had to sculpt it a little bit I'm sure but it's also a good point that you were saying because if the acoustic comes in especially mic'd in the room you're getting more frequencies like mid-range in there that could kind of fill it out yeah but but then again let's say if it wasn't the acoustic we know there's two guitars what would the other one be well I think that most of that I think double casino you could probably take the yeah. take the acoustic out and it wouldn't change the end result that much because I think there is still double tracked casino throughout the whole thing. Um, See, I disagree. I feel like that, that, like I said, that's prominent. When that comes in, you really hear that acoustic. Well, why don't we listen? To I, my, I, said, I wish. I, I why don't we? Li- I I think my I'll uh, stand by my test audio if you want to judge it and see what you think. Because I think I got pretty close. You did get close. Let's, let's see yeah. what that sounds like. Now I gotta remember which file it was in. Did you do both? You did the uh, yeah, J160 yeah. and the casino on top of one of each other, right? Yeah, hang on. Let me... I gotta and you out. did my theory. You did yep. uh, casino the direct acoust- injection with a... Yeah, I did all of them. Uh, I think it's this one. See, but I feel like that, too, that's what gives it that flange effect by having both. If you just had casino only, you wouldn't get that effect. Well, well let's but see. The fact you have both, you have that echoey sound. I don't know. I think the echo is there enough. All right, here's mine. So up up here is the uh, actual song, which I can't play. <laughs> um, and so first, I'll just play one casino, so you can hear that. And this is after I added a bunch of treble and took away bass from it because that helped it match the tone a little better. And this is middle position, like we said before. And then now if you add a second one, just right on top of it, you get this. So, is that... Night and day difference. What did you say? Night and day. Without it, well, yeah. without it, it sounds oh, like yeah. garbage. It, night and day. Yeah. You need that double guitar to get that yeah. flangey effect. And with John playing it, such a good player, playing over and over a thousand times a day, when he was double tracking that, he was playing that thing so dead on and so close that it gave it an even closer it flangey phased. effect. Yeah. Yeah. That, that's dead on. Um, and then now yeah. here's I, the acoustic as well. And let me play it by itself first. And I will note, I have flat wounds on this, which he wouldn't have had. He would have had round wounds. So it sounds yeah. a little deader than it would have. And you're not going to get that, like, uh, I don't know. That almost, sound I was talking about earlier almost, with yeah. that string vibrating well, the, as well. Yeah. The but, idea is there. Yeah, but I'll yeah. play that. And so now if we add these back in... And I think it makes that that top B and E string, like, it pierces a little bit better with the acoustic there, maybe. For sure. Well, what happens if you so that was double casino? That That's you have double right casino there? and one acoustic mic in the room. Get rid of the one of the casinos and only have okay. the acoustic and bump I the did, casino. I did try this the acoustic before. Up. Yeah, let's try that. There she is. I don't know. I don't buy it. I don't. I don't think it has enough of that flange sound. But again, what was he? You know, we're doing double casino, so you're hearing that double sound from that. Again, what settings do you have on the J160? You probably had maybe a little bit more brighter, a little more closer to the mic. Probably be factors going on. There too could be a lot of that. factors, yeah. And I don't know how much the flat wounds versus round wounds thing is going to affect that. 
but I don't know. I feel like there are at least two guitars brighter. in the intro yeah. that are identical, though. It'd be a lot brighter with it, you know? So, I don't know. And this is after I also did that same took bass and added treble to the acoustic, too, mm. even though that might not have happened as much. So I think the acoustic is a little buried, and I think you're getting that... So I still think there's two casinos, and you're getting a subtle difference from having the acoustic there, which makes the those top high See, strings a little I don't think brighter. he... He wouldn't have double track three guitars. Wouldn't have happened. He wouldn't I mean, have done three guitar parts. You got eight on tracks to work with. It wouldn't be the first yeah, time they did it. Yeah, but three times, though, John. John, for one thing, That's, three times. Yeah, that is fair. Think about that. Um, do you want to hear... And we know there's an acoustic in it with 100%. Mm-hmm. So, it's acoustic and J... It's J160 and Casino. Well, yeah, we're not... No one's no one's disagreeing with that. It's just how many. <laughs> yeah. I, yeah, but still, I so, just think that that's too many. I don't know. Maybe we'll do a poll. Uh, people that oh, we should. People that yeah, look at people this poll. People still watching. Anyone... Wait, we got this far into the video. Congratulations. Uh, yeah. yeah. Do you think it's two casinos or one casino, and then also the J160? Is it there at the beginning, or is it later on, or is it all throughout? Um, and then. Or did John call Donovan and Donovan <laughs> fly over to use the J45 on it as well? Oh, yeah. Gosh. Possibility. Um, one other thing I'll play in relation to that is people speculate that it could be the J160 through the DI as well. And so I also recorded that. So let me show you that. The the J160 that you just showed us, was that DI or mic, mic'd up? No, that was just a microphone. Oh, uh-huh, okay. Um, and when you get, when you had the J160 DI, there's more of that like woody tone still is there that you have from, that's at present as early as like the police. But you gotta stuff. move the pickup. Right, so that's the thing we don't have the pickup in the right spot so that bassy woody tone might be a bit different and well don't, yeah, don't be drilling holes into your 56 yeah but yeah exactly you are close Ooh. though laminate top adjustable bridge yeah. ceramic bridge so you got all the stuff going on that would be identical but, to p90 and everything yeah so let me play that one real quick and so i believe this is this is double tracked well let me just do one this is a singular uh j160 with the same effects added where i Raise the treble and lower the bass. You know what? That's, that's sounds pretty, pretty good. Close, yeah. 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 It's just when you play the, I can't do it unfortunately because it'll video will get taken down. But uh, if you play them side by side, the there's a lot of importance I would place on the fact that they're using the middle position on the on the casino because you do have that quacky sound which. Sam was a big proponent of <laughs> for this song. And I don't think you're going to get that on the J160. And I think you still have too much of that woody sound on it. But let me play it double tracked anyway. It sound, still sounds too much like the Please Please Me stuff to me. Yeah, but there's that phasing thing again. Yeah, I mean, that's definitely... Something that's is double-tracked. Cool. Yeah. I think... That's why I think the casino is double-tracked. Yeah. I don't think you're going to get that as much with casino and... Like, just one casino and one J160. I think there's not going to be enough overlap. Disagree. If you're playing that smack dead on as much as John played, and you're playing it, you know, repeatedly... You know what I mean? As as this timing would have been, I feel like... with And again, with the J160 being really close, Mike trebly as hell whatever it might have been a little more open room air coming in as well I, anything's possible with that I yeah. don't know I just again I just don't feel like that he would have done three guitars I just don't see it again we let's put out a poll yeah. see yeah. what people think I have a little non sequitur here that might help us a little bit though so there's um the, the song Good Night that John wrote and Ringo sung um, the album version has strings and everything but um, there's an outtake, um, take 10, that has John doing double-tracked Travis-style picking, something like this. I'm not playing it right. Something like that. And there's two of them, and you can hear them. And I have some pictures um, from those sessions. He was using the casino for that, and it looks like he was in 
not in the control room, but the, the actual studio, maybe with a deluxe amp. Um, so I'm just curious what you guys think about that. Obviously, we can't listen to it. And that's like a month show. later. Is that right? That's, in, yeah, in like October. But the tone, um, if you go back and listen to it, it's like really, well, really similar. Should we go Bruins. listen to it real quick? Obviously, it won't be in the episode, but. Yeah, just, yeah, why not? Because like uh, Paul was saying, it's like, you know, to, uh, John, it was just a rehearsal. He's not in sync with himself yet. Yeah. Okay. But once it came down to it, he really got his shit together. Yeah. Good night, take 10. That's two guitars. See, it definitely that sounds like an electric. It definitely sounds yeah, like absolutely. a casino. Yeah, that's two guitars. I'd like to make a note about that song, though, real quick hey, for I've our got a note viewers too. that references. Wow. I feel like with the double casinos, it doesn't sound like that, Dear Prudence. I feel like it becomes now, even with John being playing spot on, it becomes extra flangy, where Dear Prudence isn't as flangy as that we well, just heard. So I one, like one guitar, mellow. One guitar could be quieter. On. Yeah. Yeah, and also the he is playing through an amp this time. Rather than po- possibly, it seems yeah. like it. It, it sounds, sounds bassier, yeah. possibly. Bassy. Yeah. Um, Whereas the Casino DI that you showed us, Ryan, like sounded really close. I think. Yeah. Well, but what Sam was saying though in the beginning, he's very sloppy. But then just before you stopped, as he goes on, he straightens it up, and that's as close as we're gonna get though. Yeah. From Dear Prudence to this, it's not like the next day his timing yeah. got a little bit better or whatever. So. And like I said, I just don't feel like that, that sounded like it. I feel like it was extra flangier having the double casino. It was too much in my eyes. Whereas mm-hmm. when you do just the acoustic and the casino, it's a perfect blend for yeah. success. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, could be. It, it's a debate as old as time. <laughs> I kind of like that we're not, you know, settled on it because of gently weeps. We are all like, yeah, we all agree with each other. Like, yeah, that's 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 a wrap. But now it's if... kind of more interesting that. We don't know. Now, now if brawl people it out. complain in the comments, we can side with them. Yeah, we'll have a, a, a match. People will pay to watch it, and we'll have like Good a boxing ring. Good old-fashioned duel. We'll get gloves, yeah. and we'll see it. Just yeah. punch each other. Is that going at it? We could uh, invite Paul and Ringo, you know. <laughs> um, they wouldn't remember. Since but, we just you know. listened to that, I do want to say, I wish they had kept the vocals that, from that version. That in. version is so much better than the record. Yeah. It's just me? so much more like, I don't it was know. incredible heartwarming or like close yeah. feeling and yeah. which Ringo does a good job at that on his own but like the vocals being in there would have been fantastic Ringo's overlooked as a singer I mean I'll well say I it. mean that's why they hired him as the uh, Thomas the Tank engine narrator <laughs> he's pleasant to listen to yeah he's he was uh, nice he was the world's first AS- ASMR guy <laughs> that's what he's doing that? at the end of good night some R- Ringo mukbang <laughs> <laughs> uh. Well, no, that's no. that's uh, Ringo's mukbang was mukbang. I don't want to. I don't want to think about that. <laughs> well, well, that was just Heinz him. Baked beans. That was him eating all the beans in uh, India. <laughs> yeah. You know those photos of, like Roger Daltrey in the, oh, bathtub, yeah, in the bathtub with all the Heinz yeah. beans. Yeah. Who sell out? Yeah. 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 Well. So what else we got to talk about with? Um, uh, well, maybe. Uh, well, what's just, left to talk about with it? They'll... I've got a fever, and the only cure is more cowbell. Oh. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, I wow. so Ooh, the uh, is... <laughs> the only spot that he also does that uh, finger picking is Octopus's Garden, right? Uh, yeah, and, and that's... Julia. And Julia, oh right, Julia, of right. Is Julia double tracked? I think yeah, it is, yeah. but double it's acoustic. not uh, mic'd up or plugged in. It's just it just just okay. acoustic. It's very okay. bassy acoustic too. Yeah, it is. Yeah. Probably close enough. Yeah. He also Very did muddy. it like later on with um Look at Me. Yeah. What about the in- intro doing. the intro to uh Crippled Inside? Yeah, that's it's it. It's a little different, but yeah, yeah. Yeah, but, but it's, uh, it, yeah. Octopus's Garden yeah. is not double tracked, right? No. No, it was if you listen to the outtakes, um I used to think it was a Leslie because it has it's actually tape flanging on it, but if you listen to the outtake, it's just a clean twin reverb. All right, so another episode. It Take it yeah. easy over there. <laughs> Sorry. Spoilers. Um, yeah, 
So I don't know. That That's might... actually um, pretty big debate is um, Lucy versus Rosewood Telly versus Strat for um, Octopus's Garden. For, we'll have to it's do not that. the yeah, but it's John, isn't it? I, no, on the on lead, lead guitar? guitar. Oh, on the lead. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I've been watching Abley because I I learned the whole song the other day and I was watching Abley how Steve's using the Telecaster and made, yeah. nailed the sound. I love how he does his version of it. It's a good version. How you did it too, Sam. I was watching yours. Yeah, I. I see photos from that day with the Rosewood Telly, so I'm I'm convinced the telly. we're get, we're getting ahead of ourselves here. Yeah, I can. Yeah, I mean, the uh, Telly is also another uh, episode. Maxwell's Silver Hammer, right? Can we that and can we casino. find can, can we find someone like a super rich sponsor to like buy us Rosewood Tellies? Oh yeah, and, like vintage casinos. Just buy us one of everything the Beatles had, including <laughs> the the like. The Neumann microphones and oh, give yeah. us the entire British power system so that everything is at the right. <laughs> See, and you know, and I guess too, it would be nice for if there's anybody that really watches this and cares to comment below to see what you think about woods and stuff like that because that's all brings up another debate like how serious people are with that. You know, like oh, sure. does having a rosewood solid body say telecaster make a difference versus a solid body you know mahogany body you know like what's really resonating when you have a solidish type of body even if it was a solid body it was semi hollow i mean well again laminate and solid tops big difference but i mean to a sure. certain extent I, I don't know you know i see that tone traveler thing it's the thing that i think i even told you guys about it. it's a thing that goes on the guitar and a lot of people swear by this and what it does is it vibrates the strings so it mimics you playing the guitar and i guess that's what breaks the wood in but in my opinion that's not and i guess people do that they put their guitars new guitars up against stereos and they play loud music through the guitar <laughs> and it's supposed to change the wood and the sound of it i mean i don't know if i'm buying that i'm buying more time <laughs> I'm well, buying it's not as, not time as itself in uh, electrics. The aging the of the neck. wood. Yeah, playing the, the moisture. Back of the neck. Yeah, the, the wear. Broken in. Yeah. yeah. There's like, none of this is being mimicked. Just vibrating the strings and have the wood. I don't know. I know this is probably a whole episode in itself. Just could talk about wood. We should. But what else we got about deep I think prudence? I think I might know someone who'd be a good person to have on for that. You but know? I'll tell you later. I honestly. <sighs> What else is there to talk about with your prudence? Uh, I don't know. Other than, you know. Much. Yeah, the big three controversies are Paul on drums. Uh, mm. Is George using the, you know, Lucy or the SG? And is John using the casino or J160? And what of Ooh. those is, is the DI'd? I will say, if you want to cover a song and you got a, you know, one of those cheap Chinese casinos, this is the one to do because, uh, you just need to plug it in straight. You don't need a microphone or anything. It's uh yeah. These DI ones well, but are very again, easy to record. Again, it's different though because you know you're using that because you know you have the USA yeah, have P90 US pickups. pickups. Yeah. Whereas, because I did a test years ago and I took the video off my YouTube already, but I did the Korean casino versus the USA pickups. I remember and that. There's a yeah. difference. Yeah. You know, there's a difference between the Chinese pickups versus the, the each one does have a certain difference to it. So that's the, also well, the you know, I mean, my casino is just a standard Chinese one. I mean, the pickups, the electronics in it are crap, you know. But it, I can tell you the the pickups that they have in the Chinese ones are a lot darker. Than the USA yeah. ones for sure. Well, let's see which, real quick, maybe we just say what version each of us have. So, so Dan, uh, Dom's got the uh, the Chinese right one, which there. is like the you see it. I guess the cheapest right, one, right which is gonna have yeah. with the basically piece. the same body as mine, but it's got yeah. the um, what's it called? The oh, not, there's a little USA differences. Pickups. Like yours has the all brown back. They're like, making whereas, them like that now, yeah. though. Like standard. Yeah. Making them again yeah, like that, super yeah, I know. Cool, yeah. Um, but the main difference um, is mine has U.S. made pickups, and so mine's the inspired yeah. by John Lennon model. And the night profiles are different too. Is the uh, Paul? What do you have? I have the inspired by with a bunch of mods done to it to try to make this thing as Lennonish as possible. Of course, the... I already came with the Gold Rovers, but I did the two screw truss rod, and I mean, most notably, the sound difference is what John had, which is the nylon saddles, because every Gibson and Epiphone, 
uh, like, I don't know, well, not every single one of them, but most of them made, you know, I think it's like 62, 63, or something like that on all came through with nylon saddles. Even Paul's had nylon saddles, I'm pretty sure. And mm-hmm. you got the black so, knob um, there. Yeah, and I took a lighter to it as well. I know, it's tough to see. Is that actually how you did the, it? Yeah, I took the That's sticker amazing. off of it, and I took a lighter, and I actually, I because I, in the Beatles gearbook, there's such a close picture of it, I was able to like mimic the thing perfectly on how I burnt it and everything. That's pretty cool. That's so funny. And so, then, but yeah, I got this inspired by, I had four Epiphone Korean casinos. I just sold all four of them. And I also have another inspired by, I got the same one you have, Ryan, the Sunburst one, uh, Studio 2, the tribute they currently are using it. The Korean ones are the peerless ones, right? Yeah. And then Sam, you have a US made at the you know, US yeah, factory. Yeah, mine's the Royal Tan and it has the large headstock like Paul's. 364 yeah. and it has um funnily enough the trapeze inlays are backwards on the usa series because mm-hmm. they just yeah. wanted something different i was so mad about that when i found that out i was yeah, really weird now. <laughs> i'm still determined to get a u.s one those are great huh. yeah those it's really nice ones. it has a really the funny thing is it's like a really rounded c profile and yeah. it's the only guitar of mine when i put it up against my amps it like tilts over like it's so round Mm-hmm. You can't lean it against something. Mm-hmm. Yeah. All right. Well, I, well think... I guess we can close this one out. Yeah. So. So. What do you guys think about each of those things? I'm sure there will be tons of people talking about how they think it's Ringo on the drums, and a ton of people saying that John played the. <sighs> can't make everybody happy, I suppose. So uh, I you know, let's see. Neil, bring it on. You never know. Yeah, Could bring it Neil on. Could have been Neil Aspinall. He, you know, he was <laughs> playing guitar. We saw some pictures of him holding the Gretsch. You it know, does... during the. We and do Solomon, know, uh, been... what is it, uh, Mal Evans and uh, what's his name? Who's the guy that... Oh, Mal, I should have said, yeah. Who's the guy that was recording for EMI that George was writing songs for? Um, Jackie Lomax? Yeah, Jackie Lomax yeah. and Mal are both in the like doing claps or backing vocals or something on this, which was kind of cool to see. Um, but yeah, I think, I think we've covered everything here. So, so thanks for watching. There you go. And, Comment uh, below. Yeah. We haven't agreed on anything. This is a great way to end. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, leave it on the a The best types of podcasts are the ones where you say everything and nothing all at once. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, let us know what you think on those and leave us comments and other episode ideas. I think we've... Uh, there was a bunch of people who had asked about this, so I hope, hope we've at least scratched that itch for you. Well, but, as usual, if you've made it this far, congratulations. Your attention span is that of a, uh, of a saint. <laughs> And with that, uh, thanks for watching. We will see you later. Farewell. <laughs>